Now on to electromagnets. First, their structure and strength. The structure of an electromagnet can seem quite complicated, so let's run through one step by step. First of all, a current going through a wire causes a magnetic field around the wire. And if we take a straight wire and wrap it around a test tube, we can make a coil of wire or solenoid. Now, if we connect it up so an electric current runs through the coiled wire, what happens? You get a magnetic field around the coil that looks very similar to the magnetic field of a bar magnet. And this is the basis of the electromagnet. And unlike a bar magnet, an electromagnet can be switched on and off. So this coil of wire is the basis of our electromagnet. And we can change the strength of the magnetic field it creates in a number of different ways. The students have a simple coil of wire attached to a voltmeter which provides the electric current. So what do we need to make an electromagnet? This is an electromagnet just with the coils. Let's test it if we'll see if we'll pick up any nails. It doesn't work. No. How about with a try with the pencil? Doesn't work either. No. How about if we try it with an iron core? picked up some nails. The magnetic effect is increased if an iron core is inserted into the coil. And if I switch it off, all the nails drop off. How can we increase the magnetism? We can increase the voltage. Let's try that. Increasing the voltage increases the current flowing through the wire. It picks up nails. Then back to the original current. They now replace the coil with another one with more turns in the wire. More nails are picked up. What happens when you turn off the voltage? It falls off as well. Okay. So you need to know that electromagnets are temporary and their magnetic fields can be turned on and off. The strength of an electromagnet can be increased in three ways by increasing the size of the current and by making more turns in the wire we will increase the magnetic field and by adding a soft iron core inside the coil we will also concentrate the magnetic effect knowing that electromagnets can be turned on and off makes them very useful and they're used in a large number of different appliances they make loudspeakers vibrate and motors go round, and they create recordings onto audio tapes, computer discs, and videotapes. They're also used in relays. This is a switch where a small electric current will switch on a much larger current, and relays are often used for D reasons. Electromagnets are also used in electric bells. When the current is turned on, the electromagnet attracts the hammer which clangs the bell but also breaks the circuit. This then turns off the electromagnet, which releases the hammer. The arm springs back to its original position, making the circuit complete again. And so it goes on very quickly, as we can hear. So let's look at a question from a test paper about electromagnets. This is a diagram showing an electromagnet used in a door lock. We can see the push switch, the electromagnet in the door frame, the iron bolt in a spring and a section of the door. So the question is, if the push switch is closed and the door unlocks, explain in detail what happens. Three marks have been awarded for this answer, so we're probably looking for three points. So what is the sequence of events from when the switch is closed to the door unlocking? Well, the switch makes the circuit complete and a current flows. The iron core in the coil will become magnetized, producing a magnetic field. 
the iron bolt is then attracted to the electromagnet and springs out of the door frame, unlocking the door. The examiner will also be looking to make sure you have got the order of events correct. So remember, when the switch is on, first of all, a current flows, which magnetizes the iron core, which then attracts the iron bolt. This brings us to the end of electromagnets. If you weren't sure of the answer to the question, why not go through this section again? Here are some more top tips to help you with your revision.